Um, when I was 12 years old, I marched into the split level ranch that my parents owned when I was growing up. And if you have ever seen a split level ranch, when you come in the front door, there's stairs that go straight up and that, those went right to the kitchen or you can go down. Those were the stairs that I took straight down and across the hallway that was carpeted in indoor outdoor carpeting to the left was my brother's room to the right was the den but straight across you opened a door and you went in to my father's workshop now we had a garage but it was usually full of uh, car parts and maybe an airplane wing or two because my dad was always playing with those things but for real fixing he worked in his workshop in the basement, in the cellar, downstairs. And so I marched in with my broken toy right through that door to where my dad was tinkering around on his, on his workbench. And I brought it over to my dad and I showed him my toy and I said, Dad, I need you to fix this, please. Now, I wish I could tell you what the toy was, but what happened next was such a shock that it has completely driven it out of my mind for all these years. Because my dad took the toy and said, I can't fix this. I was 12 years old and my world was shattered. My father could fix anything. How, would it, how was it possible that he couldn't fix this toy? When I told my dad much, much later that that had destroyed my world for a while, he said, I'm surprised it took you till you were 12. I was never all that good at fixing toys. <laughs> See, my dad, he thought of himself as more of a kid. If my mother had cookies when she came home from the grocery store, she would hide them. And not just from us four children, but from my dad, mostly. And if there were cookies missing when she went back, and she asked him about it, he would say, mm, I don't know, must have been one of us kids. <laughs> must have been one of us kids. That got me thinking, I wonder what my dad was like when he really was a kid, not just one of us kids. So I went to one of his brothers. My dad's the youngest of eight children. He has one sister and the rest were all older brothers. I went to the one who was not four, but uh, six, six years older than my dad. I said, um, Uncle Neil, what was my dad like when he really was a kid? He said, well, I don't know, little, little Alfie. He was kind of trouble. I remember this one time, uh, one of the older brothers had been uh, able to come home with a parachute from the army and he gave it to us and and Alfie he must have been six or seven and he looked at it and he said I know what we can do we can test the parachute from the hayloft in the barn and so myself Neil and Harvey who was in between us and little Alfie we all went up to the hayloft and we we took the parachute and we spread it out so that it was at the back of the loft and we put the harness at the front of the loft and we looked for Alfie because he was the littlest he was the lightest he probably would should be the first one on this parachute and it was his idea so where'd you go Alfie and he he was already downstairs he said that's okay one of the big kids should get a chance to try it first so Neil put on the harness and he started running from the back of the loft and he jumped off of the hayloft and well, the ropes ran out, but the parachute never even moved, let alone opened. Thump! Right to the bottom of the hayloft. Fortunately, there was still some hay down at the bottom, but he hurt his leg pretty bad. I went to my dad and I said, do you remember this with the parachute? And my dad said, oh yeah. I really had wanted to try it out, but once they spread the ropes, uh, even when I was seven, I could see that that rope was longer than the height of the hayloft. So I skedaddled out of there. My dad was twisted then. And he's twisted now. But he's about the best dad that any girl could ask for. Happy Father's Day, Alfred Roswell. You're a twisted man.